this is James, and I'm here with the Oracle Outlook for the week starting April the 9th, 2018. This week I wanted to work with Lenormand, and so the deck that I've chosen to assist me for this week's reading is the Mystical Lenormand. It is by Regula Elizabeth Feichter, the artwork is by Urban Trausch, and it is published by AGM. So I have the deck on hand. I'm going to take a few moments to shuffle the cards. And as I shuffle the cards, I'm focusing on my usual intention for these weekly general readings. And that is, what do we need to know for the week ahead? All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the cards. and fan them out. And so now I'm looking for five cards in the fan getting my attention because when I work with Lenormand, I tend to do a line of five. So I have two, three, four. So now I'm looking for the final card and there it is, card five. All right. So now I'm taking the remainder of the deck and I'm putting it to one side. And so now let's start with the card on the far left and to see what is opening up in terms of the possible scenario being shown in the cards this week. So first card we have here is, okay, we have letter. So letter is a card that can represent written forms of communication. So I tend to look at this as paperwork, documentation. Lenormand being quite literal can represent an actual letter. I tend to look in this regard as the first card, it could represent, you know, sending a letter out or sending some forms of communication written, right? So going with that, so if it's not an actual letter or something having to do with the mail, because in the visual, um, the letter is in an envelope. So it looks like a, a, an actual piece of mail. So there may be something having to do with something that is either going out in the mail or something that we're receiving in the mail. This week, that's going to be of some importance, but... In this day and age, being what it is, we can also look at the letter card as maybe something having to do with an email or a text message just because those are other forms of written correspondence. So again, this could be an actual letter. It could be a text message. could be an email. It could also be some sort of document, some sort of um, documentation, some sort of paperwork, something of that uh, nature. So if it's not an actual letter, it could be just some form of paperwork or documentation. So now let's take a look at the next card in the line because it's going to offer us more about the letter card. So taking a look at here, okay. So here we have key. So if we go with the scenario that's being shown, if we go with the idea that the first card represents a subject, then the next card is going to be describing the subject. So here we have key. So it could be saying to like, some form of written correspondence is discovered. I tend to look at key as a card of discovery could also be some form of written correspondence is revealed. I tend to look at key as revelation. If we consider that key is a descriptor of the letter card, then this could be something that's important. This would be an important piece of paperwork, an important piece of documentation, um, some sort of written correspondence that letter or that text, that email, that is important. It could also be like whatever this form of written correspondence is, whatever the paperwork or documentation is, it will contain some sort of answer or solution because I tend to look at key as answers or solutions, right? So those are a couple of ways that we can look at the combination of letter and key. So now let's take a look at the middle card because for me the middle card is always the central issue, right? So here we have, ooh, okay. So here we have Clover, okay. So Clover is a card that can represent opportunity. So for me this represents good luck, it represents fortune, it could represent an opportunity, things of that nature. So if we go with the idea here that letter being the subject, here we have some sort of written correspondence, some sort of documentation about an opportunity. 
right? It could also be seen too, like that the message contained within the letter or the written correspondence is something that's going to be fortunate. It's going to be good luck. Again, these are descriptors of clover, right? So there is that. Now it could also be, if we actually read the cards from left to right, here we have some sort of written correspondence, written communication, that would be letter, about an answer or solution that is fortuitous, right? But it could also be that whatever this discovery or revelation is, that it's going to be about some sort of opportunity. So here we have, again, written documentation, written communication about the discovery or the revelation of an opportunity, right? And then with that, then we have to decide about the opportunity. Is it a risk or is it a gamble? Those are two other attributes of Clover that I have. So we're taking a look at a situation. We may be presented with an opportunity in written form, and then we have to decide, you know, is it something that's going to be an opportunity, something fortuitous, or is it going to be something that could be considered a risk or a gamble? The only other thing that I will say about the Clover card is that sometimes for me this can represent something that's brief. So this could be saying to like this letter that's going to arrive or this written form of communication, it's going to come briefly, which means that it, it will come within a short period of time or that whatever the opportunity that is detailed in that written correspondence is for a brief window of time, like the window of time connected to it is brief or short, right? So there is that. Now, literally, if we go with the idea here that the literal combination here, if we sometimes go with the idea here that Clover can represent, you know, some sort of games of chance. So this could be like a lottery, sweepstakes, and this would make sense too because then this could be going with the idea that the letter card can represent, you know, something, you know, tangible, something, um, Documented something, some sort of paperwork. And this could be, you know, some sort of a, a lottery ticket. You know, a lottery ticket. This could be a sweepstakes. This could be a scratch off, something, you know, of that nature. And this, but the clover would represent something small in nature in terms of like the monetary value or like it's a bonus or a sweepstakes. It would be like a small amount of money possibly coming in. So it could just be saying to like somebody discovers that they win. A small amount of money, right? They receive written notification or written documentation about, you know, some sort of winnings, and it's a small amount. So now let's take a look at what's on the other side of Clover. So the first, okay, so here we have Cross, right? So now Cross, out of the four cards on the table right now, Cross is a little bit of a challenging card because. This card immediately can suggest some sort of difficulty, some sort of burden, some sort of responsibility here, right? So if we go with the idea here that Clover can represent some sort of opportunity, then the cross card could suggest like it, it, there may be some sort of difficulty that's connected to or attached to it, right? So this idea here is if, if, if the window of time is brief or short term with it, that might be what's difficult about it, right? Or that if there is some sort of risk or gamble attached to the opportunity, then that would be what's difficult about it, right? So there is that to consider, right? The only other thing here that would be, and this would be making cross maybe something more positive, is that this could be an opportunity that is critical or necessary for someone. Like somebody's receiving some sort of opportunity and it's going to be a critical opportunity or something that's necessary, right? Now, a message here could be like it's going to be an opportunity that's going to be presented and it may seem difficult, but the message here is about it's also an opportunity to keep the faith. I tend to look at cross as a faith card, right? So it could be difficult, 
but it could just be saying to like, it's also an opportunity for you to exercise your faith, right? So this could be about good luck and faith, <laughs> if we go with that. All right, so now let's take a look at the final card in the line. Ooh, okay. So here we have bouquet. So bouquet is a card that can represent an invitation. It could represent a gift being extended. It could also represent something surprising. It could also represent something that is pleasant, something that is wonderful. So I love the fact that this is the last card in the line, right? Because it represents being on the receiving end of something wonderful. So it's making me feel, if we go with the idea that we pair the outer cards. So here we had the first card letter, right, written correspondence, something um, in document, documented form, so some sort of paperwork or documentation, then the literal pairing here could be, you know, an invitation in the mail, you know, or some sort of news or messages about an invitation, right? It could also be a surprise, you know, surprise message, you know, some sort of... Um, news or messages that comes our way, either the text message or the email, but it comes as a surprise, right? So I'm seeing that, but it's making me feel more about this idea about a possible invitation or something being extended, you know, in terms of the opportunity with Clover being the middle card, the opportunity. It's going to be something pleasant, something wonderful, something of that nature, right? But I'm seeing that as, you know, the possibility that the invitation could be in written form, right? So now, if we go with the idea here, because bouquet could be describing cross. So if we consider cross to be something difficult, um, something that's a burden, it could also be suggesting to like the burden comes as a surprise or that the difficulty comes as a surprise, this kind of thing. It could also make me feel, too, like whatever the opportunity is with Clover, that there may be some responsibilities here that come as a surprise. Because we go with the idea here that cross can represent responsibilities. So there could be saying, too, like there may be some sort of responsibilities that we're not seeing in the moment attached to this opportunity that come as a surprise, right? So, but I'm thinking too, like if we go with the idea here, like an opportunity for one to exercise one's faith or keep the faith, then if you do that, if you consider keeping the faith, then this could be with Clo uh, Bouquet, excuse me, at the end, suggesting a very pleasant and wonderful outcome, right? So I'm seeing that. So let's sum up the cards again because another thought may come to me in the moment. So again, we start off with letter. Letter represents written forms of communication. Um, so this could be an actual letter, it could be a text message, could be an email, some sort of paperwork or documentation, right? Then following that we had key. So key could represent that this message is discovered or revealed or that it is important to some degree, right? Or that it's going to contain some sort of answer or solution, right? And then we move to Clover. Clover is a card that represents opportunity. So what at the center of this, or at the focus of whatever this important documentation is, or this important message is, it will contain some kind of opportunity. Something that may be fortunate, something that may carry with it a sense of good luck. Um, it could also be an opportunity for us to maybe either take a chance um, or that there may be some level of risk or gamble with the opportunity and we need to kind of take a look at it from all possible sides in that regard, right? It could also be saying too, like there may be a short window of time that comes with the opportunity in terms of making a decision or acting on it, right? So I'm seeing that. It could be saying too, like it's going to be brief, short term. That could be the nature of the opportunity itself or it's going to be a short window of time in terms of acting on it. 
That's how I would look at Clover. Now, whatever the opportunity is, there may be some sort of difficulty attached to that that we can't see in the moment. So this card could suggest there may be some sort of burden, could be some sort of responsibility or responsibilities, you know, so it could carry with it this idea about being burdened with a lot of responsibility. So that may be one of the risks or the gambles within the opportunity is that it could just come with a lot of responsibility. And then you have to ask yourself the question, do I want to take on that much responsibility? Right? It could also suggest too, like going with the more positive aspect of cross for me, like the opportunity being presented is critical or necessary or that it's critical or necessary for you to keep the faith going forward, right? And then the final card is bouquet. Bouquet represents a surprise. It could represent a gift. It could represent something pleasant, something wonderful, something beautiful. Now, a couple of possible scenarios here, going with clover being this idea here, possibly like somebody could discover that they won a small amount of money in some sort of game of chance, so that would be a lottery, sweepstakes, that kind of thing. And then this card would make sense because that would be about gaining some kind of gift or gaining some kind of reward or an award, right? So there could be that aspect to consider, right? And it could just be saying too, like if one is willing to work through the difficulties attached to the opportunity, going back to cross, then and you keep the faith and you work through those difficulties, then you get to the other side and you realize it's very pleasant, it's very wonderful, that kind of thing. It's very beautiful in the end. So that is how I would look at the line this week and end. So on that note, I'm James Tim Mitchell. I wanna thank you for sharing space with me for this week's reading, and I look forward to sharing the same space with you again in our next video reading together. So until then, I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day, and I'm hoping that you have a wonderful week. Take care.